I still have 11k of true followers. This follow count was checked by a true American patriot. People who were young at the same time I was young, saying things like, they ran me off the internet, they forced me off the internet. It's like, oh, how'd they do that? Did they like mass report you? No, they were all tweeting at me that I'm a bitch. This person's painting a picture in which men only don't assault women because they control their urge to do so. Here's all this stuff, it's connected to religion. By the way, if religion went away, it wouldn't go away. This channel is interesting. A major position that's being repeated on this channel ostensibly is that yes, there are people grooming people into transitioning who aren't trans, but that's its own faction. And then the other half of it is about conservatives spreading hate. We can watch the furry video. Now people are gonna beg for furries. All right. Why do conservative furs talk like that? In brackets, bigotry is quirky. Yes, furries who are conservative, conservatives who are furry. Hey guys, since my last video about furry stuff actually did a lot better than I expected, uh, I've decided I may start implementing more furry related videos. Um, I'll still be sticking to, you know, the theme. They don't do furry related videos with an avatar like that. Wait, there's a recommended video of theirs to the right, which is conservative furs and manufactured victimhood. In brackets, why are so many furries leftists? That's not a question you want to ask, if you are on the left, in my humble opinion. Themes of my channel and stuff, still about politics, LGBT issues, religion, whatever, um, including today. But I wanted to sort of talk about the Clayton Conway situation, both in his own drama and just how I think it relates to greater issues with conservatism and also by extension religion. So let's just get in. That's broad. Hang on. Wait, what? The Clayton Conway situation, both in his own drama and just... I don't know who that is. I presume they're going to tell us how I think it relates to greater issues with conservatism and also by extension religion. Issues with conservatism and by extension of that with religion. Okay. So let's just get into it. For those unaware, Clayton Conway is a 66 year old gray muzzle furry who was rather popular on Twitter until recently. We did start watching this before and I had to, I had to tap out. I believe and assume gray muzzle furry just means that he's old. Yes? So it's just a way for them to display their terminology. Because they already told us he's 66 years old. Uh, yeah, a gray muzzle is an older member of the furry subculture. Did research. Recently. Clayton was generally known for being seen as somewhat of a fandom grandpa of sorts and making positivity posts about loving the fandom and was seen as a good example of being able to enjoy the fandom at any age. However, this week he made a series of tweets insinuating he wanted to shoot migrants and perpetuating racist and xenophobic conservative rhetoric about immigrants. Okay. Oh, the, 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 little, the little avatar changed. Do you know how long it's been since I've seen this, this style of video? Let's go. It's also worth noting that Clayton- Can we see the tweets, by the way? I, are we going to be shown the tweets? We are. It looks like we're going to be shown the tweets. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. He lives in central Florida, so he's not even on a border state where he would be regularly encountering illegal immigrants. So, there are a lot of problems with this. It's true. If we're going to talk about- If we're going to talk about- Watching the border and people and fresh ones crossing over, they're going to be way fucking more over southern border. You still get illegal immigrants coming into Florida. As people in the chat are mentioning via water. It is true that it's going to be a lot less than over the southern land border. However, even if Florida weren't America's dingle, even if Florida were, like, somehow transported right into the middle of the U.S., people don't enter a country illegally and then, like, step over the border and then get glued to the ground. There aren't, like, massive bug strips where once you cross the border you can get in, but then you're stuck there. You can't move. You can run into illegal immigrants anywhere. It's also kind of a weird comment if she's talking about someone who says they want to shoot illegal immigrants, and then your response is, 
Oh, but you're not going to see many. What's the suggestion? Oh, you should move to Mexico then. Not Mexico. Fuck me. <laughs> well, people do cross into Mexico. People do cross into Mexico. You should move to a. You should move to a southern state. I presume he doesn't want to shoot illegal immigrants from the U.S. You should move down to the south, and and, and you'll get a ton of illegals. Okay, crossing over. It will be like a shooting range for you because they'll all be crossing there. Why would? You, why would that be important? Shouldn't it be obvious, perhaps, that it's connected to DeSantis and what he's done regarding illegal immigration, pepping him up? perhaps? Anyway. Um, not that that would make this kind of statement okay, but it's just odd. Okay, they do they do recognize, not that it would make this statement okay, but it's, but it is odd. They mention it because it's odd. It's not, it's not really that odd. It's not really that odd. Especially when you consider how much it's discussed. Regardless of where you are in the US, it's if you're online, odds are, odds are you've seen discussion of illegal immigration, even if you haven't seen an illegal immigrant. I'm just going to read the thread as well as put it. You also, of course, if you want to be like, hmm, odd, you don't necessarily know whether someone's immigrated illegally or not. You can't just tell by looking at someone anyway. Even if he was somewhere where there'd be a lot of illegal immigrants, you don't necessarily always know. And it's not that he's somewhere where there aren't any illegal immigrants. Anyway, just silly, silly commentary, which is fine. If you're actually being funny, but on screen, but it goes as follows. I'm going to stop at the gun store today and buy a couple hundred dollars worth of bullets. With everything going on at the border, you never know when you might need them. That's vague enough to be safe. Do people really think all the people crossing the border every day are staying at the border? Wait, he said this. He said the thing that counters what this person said in response to him. Do you really think they just stay there? They probably want to get as fucking far away from the border as possible. To be honest, uh, I'm just imagining I want to get into a country. I'm just going to do it illegally. I'm not staying anywhere near the border, if pos. If pos. Also, his first tweet is vague enough. That it could even... He could even be anticipating riots. The majority of the people crossing the border are men between the ages of 18 and 30 with military haircuts. With military haircuts? You have to remember that... <laughs> you mean... You mean with short hair? You have to remember that both this guy tweeting and the commentator are, are furries. So despite me attacking what this lady who's talking is saying. It doesn't mean I endorse this guy, okay? Just to be clear. Just to be clear. And no, I'm not racist. I have friends of every race and ethnicity. It was like a meme. It was like a meme. I, I just, I like the implication that if they all had long hair, it would change, it would change it for him. End quote. After making these comments, he played the victim claiming people were attacking him for being a responsible gun owner and not for making thinly veiled threats at immigrants. I don't think he was a threat to immigrants. I don't think he was a threat to anyone in particular. It was kind of cringe, kind of cringe mm, attempt at what? What would you say? Tough guyism? I'm going to be prepared if any- if shit goes down, I'm going to be prepared, brother. I don't think he even necessarily implied the people being shot would be immigrants if he had to shoot someone. Grants. He made a now delete- Oh. So, with an accent on it. I guess because I am a gun owner, I am a bad person. Right, this is also a cringe- However bad the response to him- Is, there's- there's no way the response to him was just, You have a gun, oh no! I guarantee this response of, so I guess because I'm a gun owner, I'm a bad person, is a terrible, dumb fuck level response. If you think that, then I don't need you as a friend. I've owned guns since I was 15 years old, and I'm almost 67 now. I used, I used to teach gun safety class. I don't, I don't think anyone's going after him being like, I don't think it's safe for you to have a gun, old man. 
I don't think the gun part is is primarily was setting people off. Threats at immigrants. He made a now deleted tweet as well, calling pe- those criticizing him snotty nosed kids. Oh no! By the way, I'm back, and I'm not going to let some snotty nosed kids run me off of here. What you mean you're back? Did he leave at some point? Did I word that right? And by the way, I still have 11k of true followers that I love. This follow count was checked by a true American patriot. 100% real people, no bots, no libtards. Oh, it could have been a ban. True, true, true. Subsequently, he claimed to be taking a break from Twitter, only to come back the next day with the aforementioned tweet. Um, he took a break. No, that's that's very cringe. That is also an old person thing, though. But also, no, it's kind of a... It's an old person in general thing. But also you get these people... to get these people, young people. Actually, not young. My age. People who were young at the same time I was young, saying things like, they ran me off the internet, they forced me off the internet. It's like, oh, how'd they do that? Did they, like, mass report you? No, they were all tweeting at me that I'm a bitch. Like, so you you left. And continuing his positivity posts after it, while continuing to receive backlash. What I'm mainly going to talk about isn't Clayton specifically, but I think that he's a very interesting case study on conservatives dismissing criticism with an unusual brand of toxic positivity. Uh, so, that happens a lot. I think you haven't seen anything online if you think that's a... Did did they say conservative furry? That he's a very interesting case study on conservatives dismissing criticism with an unusual brand of toxic positivity. Okay, conservatives in general. Um, every influencer or wannabe influencer. Not every, but it's a strategy that can be used by anyone who wants to have a following or has a following the half-life of of online content is extremely short something bad happens business as usual positive thoughts positive vibes positive vibes positive vibes your shit's gone and the bigger you are the better it works after deleting the snotty nose kids tweet he made a very unusually positive tweet that seemed very disingenuous in attempt to seemingly get people back on his side which i will also show on screen Wait. I want to apologize for calling you a bunch of snotty-nosed kids. That was not nice of me, so I'll be deleting that post. May all have a happy and most joyful life. It's it's an apology. With a cringe sign-off. It's an apology? Wait, this is kind of based. Fucking conservatives always apologizing? True! Actually, true and based take. Conservatives are always apologizing. Stop. I will also show on screen. This type of thing is something I see mostly among Christians, but especially among furries who are Christians. You see Christians apologizing a lot. That sounds about right. You see Christians apologizing when they say something nasty? Wouldn't that be what you expect? Stereotypically? among Christians, but especially among furries who are Christians and conservative, and seem to be kind of rampant in that niche of the fandom. Although I will note, I don't know if Clayton is religious or not, but I see this mostly with conservative Christian furries. It's not uncommon to see conservative- So this is a behavior most common in conservative Christian furries. Conservative furs tweet bigoted things only to be followed up by an ooh woo I'm just a puppy type statement. Um, one that became a meme a while back. Uh, and is honestly rather infamous and kind of funny, um, is a response to criticism from well-known Nazi fur diesel raccoon that I will also show on screen. No, this is because they're a mentally ill furry. This isn't because they're, like, Christian conservative furry. A coup was attempted to overthrow the government and install a dictator as the leader of this country. I like you deeply as a friend, and I'm going to choose not to even respond to that. Inflates you making you big and round. Well, I think the admittedly silly nature of the fandom definitely lends itself to serious topics being taken too lightly. It's worth Yeah, it's prom- it's the the main the main element in this is the furry part. My G. Is this a furry trying to distance themselves from cringe by saying it's the other labels that are more important than the furry label in I inflate you and make you big and round like my little fuzzy wuzzy? 
noting that this isn't nearly as common to see with the with left wing furries making serious topics cutesy or even sexual when when discussing. What little I've seen suggests to me that this is either false or it's a matter of insane scale. If this is correct, then the difference is like five tons of leftist furry bullshit and ten tons of conservative furry bullshit. This isn't a leftist furries don't do this and conservatives do thing. No. What are you saying? Their side of the political spectrum. Art and such that can be seen as cutesy or taking something lightly usually is accompanied by a genuine or serious caption or a fundraiser of sorts or someone's... So they have said, oh, the lefty side doesn't really do this. Oh, but they take serious issues and make goofy cartoons of it. But that doesn't count because they also say something serious. So you're saying both groups do it, but one of them also does something else so it's like they didn't do it, I get. No, that's not how... Even in what you're saying, you should have just lied. You should have just lied and not told us that. Because I wouldn't know. I'm not into furry stuff. Go fund me. It's also, re also worth noting that this is rarely done in response to criticism, unlike conservatives. Um, while it's exceedingly common for... This is rarely done in response to, to criticism. You're just, you're just saying it and not showing us. I thought you were going to show us stuff. You showed us that, that Clayton guy. You explained and showed... Can you still get away with this? Can you still get away with just saying stuff is true? Right wing first to become dismissive of the conversation, evoking silly and even sexual language. I think a major reason for this being amplified on the right is the fact that the right is generally religious in nature. Even those who are not... You think people... Thesis, hypothesis, whatever. The idea being floated here is that conservatives are more likely to respond to criticism in a joking or lighthearted way because they're more likely to be religious. I'm just trying to... Religious themselves are surrounded by and generally supportive of politics that are founded on religious grounds or advocated for by extremely religious or even often Christian nationalist politicians and public figures. Christianity, particularly the brand of fundamentalist evangelicalism that motivates the right, often advocates for harmful and even that motivates the right as a whole what year do you think it is it's it's a it's a faction but godless snowshoe what decade do you think we're in violent beliefs while also repeating phrases about how god loves you how god cares for everyone even those that they want to harm and how actually these harmful beliefs will make you happy and a better person among other things implying they are the most loving and compassionate group of people out there because of their god the phrase there's no hate like christian love has become popular in response to this type of rhetoric for that reason i think a good example of this is women christian influencers who will advocate oh. for their own oppression Oh, trad wife, let's go. Advocate for their own oppression. ...and harm by dressing up misogynistic beliefs like being pressured into having a nuclear family. So nuclear family? What is this? Oh, what the f- ...pressured into having a nuclear family, submitting to your husband, being discouraged from having- Is this- Is this propaganda? As in, is this channel made by some religious conservative person? They have this avatar talking about how, ooh, these horrible women, they're talking about having a nuclear family, and then they pop up a picture of a furry, anthropomorphic character with its blue-colored butthole pointing at you. Is, does this exist to make me dislike this person's side? Having careers or by- Like, there's, there's like, look at, look at this, there's like- Subliminal, subliminal hatred generator. Bioessentialist ideas about women being unfit for certain tasks by making those topics almost aesthetic. The holy girl glow up trend, among other similar things talked about by many. Are you aware of bread tube? Have you, have you heard of contrapoints? Or wannabe contrapoints slash philosophy tube? Granted, it's different topics. But the idea of anchoring things to an aesthetic and making it a matter of taste and style, if, if what you're saying is going to hinge on doing that, no, that's, that's way more of a, of a proggy thing. 
nowadays at least because i think all the right I, I think all the right people who did that got annihilated off the net or shoved underground people like mrs midwest girl to find or paul and morgan show this kind of forced subjugation as cutesy or aesthetic in a way of talking about modesty fashion tips or recipes to be a good help meet while refusing to elaborate on the harmful beliefs that these very simple actions are motivated by right what they've said makes them sound like an absolute schizo if they've said what I think they said. Under Paul and Morgan, show this kind of forced subjugation as cutesy or aesthetic in a way of talking about modesty. They show the forced sub subjugation of women. So, like, we're talking some some handmaid's tale, religious cult shit. Go back, back to the stereotype of the 50s. Women should be seen, not heard. You, your job is to serve your husband. You're a slave. We're talking that kind of position, presumably. Modesty fashion tips or recipes to be a good help me. And they're, pre they're presenting that as cutesy by giving fashion tips and recipes. No, I don't. You have to show us an example. How is their fashion tip or recipe communicating that? You immediately think that. And then they say, while refusing to elaborate on the harmful beliefs that these very simple actions are motivated by. So their claim is that the recipes being shared and the fashion tips are motivated by the beliefs, but the video itself doesn't contain an endorsement of those beliefs. The alleged harmful beliefs aren't even presented or expressed in the video. It's just saying that those beliefs are a motivation for the fashion tips or recipes. That's insane. They won't even acknowledge the things that aren't in their video, but clearly motivate their video. How then do they function as a tool of spreading that belief or ideology if it's not apparent, if it's not necessarily apparent and it's merely a motivator to them? How are they, how are they associating those beliefs with an aesthetic if it's merely a motivator to what they do and it's not present in the, in the production itself? How does that work? Like, if I drew a circle and posted it online, and my thought was, I'm drawing this circle because I hate beans, the people seeing that circle will never know that that's the intent or inspiration for drawing that circle. They're just going to see a circle. You have to show us what you're talking about, because otherwise what you've just said makes it sound like you're an insane supposed mind reader. It makes them more palatable and easily digestible and seem much less harmful to those who may be considering taking on this type of lifestyle. If they're taking it on, then it isn't the lifestyle that is that is the extreme bad one. If it's something they can take on or put on or take off, then it's not subjugation, my G. Presenting unfair standards that are applied to women and not men on the basis of their religion as cute fashion tips is much more palatable than admitting that your Hold on. Cute fashion tips is much more palatable than and not men on the baking on this type of lifestyle. Presenting unfair standards that are applied to women and not men on the basis of their religion as cute fashion tips is much more You have to give example. What do you mean? You've, you've named these people. Show us what you're talking about. Also, if we're talking about influencers, the platform they're on is swarming with insane standards for men to achieve. Where they're posting their content, even if they are doing this, is in a, is in a sandstorm, an avalanche of examples of insane standards for men to live up to. So if you're, if you're, cared about, if you, if you're caring about it being disproportionate, or unbalanced between men and women, uh, actually, them putting their stuff on Instagram or Twitter or TikTok or whatever, actually, I'd say that's a balancing, a balancing element. More palatable than admitting that your religion sees women as lesser than men, and that, as a result, views women being assaulted or being... So this person's criticism is that they're not saying women are less than men, but they believe they think that or are motivated by that belief. So it's bad that they're not saying it. Sounds like frustration that they're not easier for you to point at and say it is this. If that's never ever expressed, 
then how would that instill in someone that belief? Could be that I'm not understanding what these videos are, but all you've told us is that they're fashion tips and recipes. ...sexualized as the fault of themselves for what they wear as opposed to men who lack self-control or respect. A Sorry, what? ...views women being assaulted or being sexualized as the fault of themselves for what they wear as opposed to men who lack self-control or respect. What are these videos? You told- again, you told us- Recipes and fashion tips. What are- what are in these videos? Show me. Also, I don't- I don't think... How do I phrase this effectively? Not effectively. How do I- how do I phrase this to effectively communicate what I mean? This person's painting a picture in which men only don't assault women because they control their urge to do so. Bruh. Another common example of this is very present when homophobia is discussed as helping gay people by saying that they only want you to go to heaven or that you'll be happier in God than by living in your quote-unquote sins. Okay, what if they b believe it though? Phrases like hate the sin, not the sinner are kind of the epitome of this type of approach to bigotry and the way that they claim to be loving and supporting while advocating gay people undergo abuse of conversion therapy or forced celibacy. This can also be seen when talking to atheists or those belonging to other faiths while fighting for theocracy and forcing those around them to follow their beliefs with things like replacing- It can be a rationalization of, of bigoted feelings and bigotry. What if they actually believe it though? Evolution with creationism in schools, passing laws like the one that allowed a public football, uh, public school football coach to lead prayers in school, and quote unquote religious freedom laws that actually amount to allowing discrimination. I don't know these examples. Could you please- could you please show me? Because the way... Normally, if you're not going to show someone the details, you want to you wanna push it harder. You want to push it beyond what it is. If, if this is allowing him to lead prayers, I don't care. If it's allowing him to make students follow in prayers, yeah, that's bad. But if it is what this person said, and it's, he's allowed to lead a prayer, presumably that people engage in voluntarily, why would you say it like that? If it lead prayers in school, and quote unquote, if if it is what she said, why are you telling the truth about it? Because that doesn't sound bad to me. Quote religious freedom laws that actually amount to allowing discrimination. However, these things are still explained away by many people in the same way as homophobia, that they only want you to experience the love of God and go to heaven. While not all conservatives are religious, many subscribe to the same harmful beliefs and are influenced by this approach to undermining the bigotry and violence their views promote with statements of love and support. While I think that there's many reasons we see conservative furs, religious or not, undermine the seriousness of their cruel statements, as conservatives, they are still influenced by this extremely common method of promoting conservative ideas. I don't- And other people aren't? Hold on. They are still influenced by this seriousness of their cruel statements. As conservatives, they are still influenced by this extremely common method of promoting conservative ideas. As conservatives, they are influenced by this. Is the conservative brain just entirely different? What is this phrasing? They're speaking very fast. Not very fast, I can speak up faster than this, but it's a, it's a, it's a shotgun of trash. It's a shotgun of trash. They say very, very little, very, very little, very, very little, and they say something fucking extreme and just zoom past it. Sorry, could you clarify? As conservatives, they're influenced by this? What does that mean? I don't really have a solution to this, to be honest. People <laughs> A solution to what? People saying something you don't like and then continuing to be goofy afterwards. Just stop being a furry and hanging out with fucking freaks. Like Clayton, don't really seem to understand why they aren't forgiven for being violent and hateful if they just seems to not understand why you aren't forgiven. I don't understand what's happening. Does that Clayton guy care? To this, to be honest, people like Clayton don't really seem to understand why they aren't forgiven for being violent and hateful if they just being violent and hateful. Did he actually shoot people? He said he has an expectation of violence given what occurs at borders. Does he want you to forgive him for saying that? 
He asked, the thing he asked for forgiveness for, or at least apologized for, was calling people snot-nosed kids, is my understanding. The only thing he apologized for was name-calling. Make tweets about positivity and cute furry stuff. Honestly, all we can do is refuse to support these types of people and call out their bigotry when it's shown. Even if religion were to go away, I don't think that this type of thought process would, as it's- <laughs> oh. Here's all this stuff, it's connected to religion. By the way, if religion went away, it wouldn't go away. This is an AI. This is- this is an AI trained on old reddit.com slash r slash atheism threads. Deeply ingrained in Western conservatism, and I can only hope that as mo more older conservative generations fall out of power, that the manipulation and bigotry falls out. As older generations fall out of power, you mean die off? You can say that. That's not a threat. I have some bad news about way the ways some right-leaning youth look low. Out of fashion with them, but that's all I got today. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Hade. Wait, what was that word? Guys, hada. Hada? Hada? Oh, it's Hebrew. Oh no. Cowbell 5008. Presumably also a furry. Don't lump conservatives into a category. What about the category of conservative? Fuck you. Conservative is quite literally already a category. Sorry I had to be- Sorry I had to be the one to inform you. I wish they weren't right, but they are. Okay, this furry is just a extreme lefty. I don't think they even showed... Mm, I don't think you can say that off this video. Odds? Probably decent odds, but I don't think they even included any of their viewpoints in this video. I first thought he was just left-leaning... Oh, is this a guy? But nah, he's completely in the echo chamber, but I guess at least he isn't deleting a lot of comments. I'm only reading this because there's a response. Taking this as a compliment with an E. I do not wish to be mistaken for a centrist. Right. Do they understand that they're doing the whole associate associate ideology with particular appearance or a, an aesthetic thing? They may be. There are a lot of people who are like, no oh, fucking centrists, fucking liberals, you gotta be a, a true leftist, blah blah blah. And then you look at what they believe and it's like, Okay, you're you're moderate. You're moderately on the left, um, because it has become to many people a matter of aesthetics and appearance. Uh, I would suggest that that strategy makes influencing people less effective because they don't they don't fully incorporate the ideas. It becomes like a it becomes like a marinade on their outer layer, and they don't actually deeply believe anything. They just want to be seen as believing that because they like the way wearing that coat makes you look, and you don't have to engage any deeper if you just like the way the people who are talking about it look or present themselves. And then you can copy the way they present themselves, and not really accept the ideology. Mm hmm. Any other good bits and pieces? Oh no, here we go. Welcome to hell. So what exactly? Conservatives shouldn't be allowed in the fandom? Yes, says Snapcheck. Guess what? Not everyone is a hive mind. Cool, counterpoint. Shut up, I don't care. You obviously care about politics, though. Nah, but I can dream, says it. All I'm seeing is a lot of baby Transmedicalism and gatekeeping. No, it's not bad. Oh, Transmedicalism was uh, thrown away and attacked for a long time, and it is coming back now. If you are not familiar, at least my understanding is, uh, Transmedicalism would be the idea that being trans is actually something that you are. That it uh, can be described as a condition and can be diagnosed. Typically, that will also include the suggestion that uh, perhaps dysphoria is necessary to some degree, and that it is something that can be dealt with as a, as a medical issue. The abandonment of that is what you see in the, if someone says they're a woman, they're a woman. 
oh, if you just kind of feel that way, it's not, it's not that, it's not that solid a thing. It's not, it's not an issue at all. Blah, 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 blah. Which means two people who may perhaps suffer and, and need help, mm, you have to be ignored because that undermines the idea that it, it that it isn't uh, a condition that needs treating, for instance. And you end up with, with people and more people, because I presume actually being trans, presuming it's a, it's a real thing, seems to be, they're going to be more rare than the people who just want to say, I am, I feel in my soul that I am this. Uh, so you're going to, the actual people are going to lose to the Tumblrites 10 out of 10 times. Absolutely unfavorable matchup. But it seems that transmedicalism is coming back somehow. I think, I think, because it's finally been accepted that normies do not vibe with the idea that you are what you say you are. I think it's been finally accepted that it's a, it's a level of, of poison that cannot be tolerated while being successful as you want to be politically. It's too, much of a, it's too much of a liability to let that go. In the eyes of online influencers, at least, and, uh, and general online users, I don't really know about politicians yet, which will be interesting to see. At least, you know, I mean, the conservative politicians are already going to be like, <laughs> it's an abomination, or whatever. Anyway, but the, the, a, a shift in the left half of everything going from you are what you say you are to no it's it's a, it's actually a thing you are or you aren't i don't know if we i don't know if that's happening i don't know if we'll see that to be honest i don't look at trans stuff very much i just have a very surface low level knowledge because of how much it's thrown everywhere Sure, we can have the so furry So I know I'm usually kind of hour. passively a furry on this channel. I don't really talk about it. It's just that my son... Passively a furry puts avatar of self as anthropomorphic animal on screen and is avatar. Okay, I get what they mean, though, at least in their speech. Ona is on the screen. Um, but I recently came across a very unpleasant right-wing furry channel um and while his content is both bad in a moral and production sense um he did make me think about something so let's talk about it i'm gonna flip very soon and not for the reason you might be thinking the creator with the channel by the name of panda the man recently came up on my recommended this video uh the video in question was titled what am I hearing in the background? Are you playing the other video? The thing that was going to make me flap is this. Did you hear this stuff in the background? I'm doing it now. They keep touching, presumably, their desk where their microphone is. Fucking stop. Bully furries melt down over Native American fursuit. This isn't a review of that particular video, uh, but if you feel inclined Bully to furries. suffer through watching it, it will be linked below. However, for context, if you don't want to put yourself through that, um, the majority of it is spent... Is Grandma listening to the radio in the background? Defending a member of the fandom who has been known to cause problems, and also made a headdress slash war bonnet for their suit, um, while not being... It is an echo. Oh, I know there's an echo. I'm not sure what caused it. It wasn't there in my editing program. I don't think I can listen to this, to be honest. And I'm not listening to this. <laughs> uh, do they have anything else we want to look at? No, autism does not affect your gender. If you believe... If you believe in the uh, progressive model of gender, of course it does. How would it not? Transmedicalism explained by a transmedicalist. Stop assuming what we believe without asking. Sorry, did, did we... I forgot, did we... Did we not just watch a video where they were assuming someone's beliefs based on them sharing recipes and fashion tips? What else we got? I went to a VR church. Vote blue or unsub. How too cute create more detransitioners? I know that's a, what is it? There's, what, it, the trans thing, it's, it's too cutes and true scums? What is a too cute? 
Uh, so yeah, a 2Q is a person who believes that gender dysphoria is not an essential trait to being transgender. What is the take going to be here? That they convince people they're trans? That they groom people into believing they're trans? They, they get surgery, take hormones, and then they realize they're not and detransition? So I want to make a video talking about why I think the 2Q xenogender type inclusionist ideology results in more detransitioners. This, this, this. Luckily, I never medically transitioned, but because of this ideology, I thought I was a trans male for three plus years. This channel is interesting. So a major position, a major position that's being repeated on this channel ostensibly is that yes, there are people grooming people into transitioning who aren't trans, but that's its own faction. And then the other half of it is about conservatives spreading hate. Do they have a video where they address rightoid people saying trans people are going to trans your kids? And also at the same time discussing their hypothesis that it's people who don't believe gender dysphoria is necessary convincing people to transition? Now, I'd like to go into the stating this is not a statistical fact. As far as I'm aware, there have been no studies or surveys on this. Um, this is my perspective, and though I will be linking sources to prove- It'd be super interesting if they've got a video that's like, conservatives are a little bit wrong about people turning your kids trans. Prove that gender that's is That's a video a I want to see. And is in fact neurology. This is my take on something, and I would like to make that very clear. <gasps> First of all, I want to say- Regardless of if a detransitioner held a xenogender or too cute ideology, I do not have any ill will towards them. If anything, I feel bad for them because, in my opinion, they are a victim of this ideology. And regardless of how I feel about their social politics, I don't think anyone has should have to go through the pain of everything that comes along with being a detransitioner, whether that's just medical or social. What about the pain of transitioning to begin with when it wasn't appropriate for them? Now, it is a fact that brains are gendered and that fetal development and hormonal levels in the womb and stuff like that as well. Probably. I'm not saying they wouldn't agree with that, but it's... I feel like it's... I'm interested in this person because I feel like it's very rare to have like anti-religion, anti-conservatism videos. And this. Normally, if you're going to be doing these positions, I feel like you'd be a channel that just does this. Because this is going to turn off so many of the people who would support your anti-conservatism, anti-religious videos. Well, as neurology, contribute and are the, basically the reason that people are trans. Again, I'll be linking sources to this in the description. Wait, linking wait. sources. Neurology, contribute and are the, basically the reason that people are okay. trans. Again, I'll be linking sources to this in the description. So I'm not going to go. So yeah, it's something you are or something you aren't. It's not. It's not something that could even be culturally transmitted to you, as the people opposing this person might effectively suggest. Okay. Go into reading those studies here or anything. I have done that before. I'll link the video where I do it, and again, I will be linking the sources. But if you don't believe me on that, I want you to go read those sources and watch those videos for Ed slash Calvin Gara. But Calvin Gara thing. was essentially chased off the internet want these ideas out there um and that means that the prevailing ideology coming from the trans community both from within it and to the outside is a few things one gender is purely a social construct this is a scientific falsehood but it is what they are presenting being trans is a feeling being trans is the result of emotions action and when okay i'm getting bored now Let's see if we can find something spicier. I'm bored because they're saying what I thought they were going to say. <laughs> Anti-theism isn't just about Christians. Sources in description. Oh, his self-diagnosis there. I have a feeling they'd be... I have a feeling they'd, they'd have an okay take on it, to be honest. Oh, BPD self-diagnosis? I think they might have a schizo take on that. Hold on. Let's, let's just peep the anti-theism video. And if this isn't, this isn't tight, if this isn't pure cringe, we'll move on to something else. I finally have a tolerable mic. This is a development. I'm still messing- Whoa! This is nice straight away. 
trigger warning, mentions of suicide, religious trauma. I would just like to point to you, or point you to, this idea that, oh, it's conservative furries and stuff who will who will bring up horrendous, brutal things and also keep it cutesy or whatever. We have mentions of suicide written in, ooh, goofy, Disney-esque font with stars on this video of theirs. Around with the settings and everything, so if- it's, it's, it's primarily the conservative side, right? It's different when the other side does it, okay? If there are some audio issues, they will hopefully be fixed by the next video, but I played around with it for a really long time, and I think ultimately I'm going to have to talk at like a natural volume and stuff for me to know how sensitive to make it and where to put it and stuff, so we'll see how that goes. But moving on from that, I've been wanting to remake my original first video, which is just titled Anti-Theism. Anti-Theism um, take two. Really, Let's since go. I started having even the slightest clue of what I'm doing making videos, obviously there's still a million things I could improve upon, but I think my content is at least watchable now, and I think that that video is very painful to sit through. <laughs> Not even just the mic quality, but the editing, the way I'm talking is very slow and unsure. And it's just, it's just really unpleasant to watch. So we're fixing it. This is the fixed version. Make this video a more comprehensive overview of both what anti-theism is, at least when I talk about it, um, and why I believe it so that it can kind of be a redirected to this video if you have questions or something isn't clear type of way. I'm going to start out with basic terms and then later i'll explain in a separate section why i personally think them or explain caveats maybe that i didn't necessarily explain very well in the original video or things that i get questions about you get the point yes yeah, sweaty daddy i could be smashing random attacks in street fighter you're right damn incredible thank you for the life advice brother you could be the next andrew tate how much do i have to pay to join your bro university online to maximize my uh value for time to define anti-theism in its kind of like most basic Google definition type form is just opposition to the belief in God or gods. But I tend to be a little bit more specific when explaining that because technically I include non-theistic religions when I say I'm an anti-theist, which like... Right, so you're going to make words even more unwieldy. This isn't what I... So you're anti-religious. Non-theistic religions? Yeah, religions that don't have gods, don't involve gods. I know technically isn't what it means, but I want to clarify that, yes, I am including pretty much all religions. I'll explain the pretty much a bit later, but when I say I'm an anti-theist, I more specifically mean that I think religion is inherently harmful by definition. And I also want to kind of provide my own definition of religion, because while it may not be what everyone defines it as- Here's my video about what this term is, and why I support it. By the way, I'm going to be using totally in the idiosyncratic definitions for every term used to define this original term. Um, okay. As or whatever, there is a lot of gray area or a lot of people going like, well, what about this? Does this count as a religion? Because it doesn't believe in God, but I think we can all agree, like, I don't know, Buddhism is a religion, that sort of thing. So my own personal definition for religion going forward for this video is... The belief that a fundamental part of the universe is explained by an unproven and metaphysical force, laws, or intelligence. Note that it has to be unproven and metaphysical. I mean, metaphysical by definition is unproven, but I want to be very, very clear with the wording. And that force, laws, or intelligence can be just... You've, you've put yourself in a position where you have to, uh... You have to now... You have to now lay out your standards for something being considered proven would that be like because what the f in creating a video explaining something you've made it far more opaque and incomprehensible than if someone were to just guess what you mean it's one of those things or all of them so for example god would obviously be an intelligence something like karma would be a force and laws would be something along the lines of the ten commandments being given by god or i'm probably saying this word wrong but the concept of like haram in islam and that the way you implement those things into your life is a fundamental factor on your afterlife and the much more straightforward wait why are you adding afterlife is afterlife only relevant to what's forbidden is islam or are you applying that to everything or yeah, mad nom. That's why I bring up what's, your, what's this person's standard for proven. They shouldn't really say that. It should be more like something without 
A, I presume they're going to mean something has a large degree of empirical evidence supporting it being correct. But sort of definition of anti-theism that I'm going to be using throughout this video is religion is inherently harmful. If you want a video more specific to what harms religion actually does, that that's the whole point of the video, I will okay. have a little card in the corner um, on a video I did about that, but I'm just oh going to skim God. over it here to briefly explain. I think there are a lot of harms that come from religion, but a lot of them are dependent on the religion, which is the purpose of that other video. But something that is consistent across all religions is... Okay, consistent across all religions, let's go. ...is basing a fundamental part of your worldview and how you think the world works on something with absolutely no substantial evidence. So when... Absolutely no... substantial evidence. Ah. Uh... When I tell people I'm an anti-theist, I get a lot of, well, what about this religion that's really peaceful, or this religion that's not bigoted at all? And I have to point out that while those are absolutely harms that are done by and perpetuated by and normalized by a lot of religions and not just Christianity, that is not the fundamental reason that I'm an anti-theist. Because ultimately, what I think is bad about it is that you are basing a core belief on a completely unfounded, unproven, and not even suggested to be near-proven thing. And while I do think believing really anything... What's the... the, the harm, though? The harm, though? The, in, the necessary inherent harm, though. What if someone believes something that has no proof and then they turn out to be right? With that evidence probably isn't great. I wouldn't go as far to say believing something without evidence is always harmful. It absolutely... Okay. okay. ...can be in other now cases go. that aren't related to religion, like, for example, anti-vaxxers. But a lot of unproven beliefs are relatively harmless, which is why I'm not saying unproven belief in and of itself is necessarily harmful because it can be benign, but specifically that is a that it is a core factor to how you think the world works, and for a lot of religions, how you Right. How about a model of gravity that's just a little bit wrong? Let's say you didn't understand the evidence for gravity, so actually your conception of gravity has no support because it's not the one that is supported? What's the harm? There are many things you could believe about the way the world works that could lead you to to being harmed but it isn't it absolutely isn't inherent you conduct yourself on a day-to-day -day basis what you see is appropriate to do whether that's like as an evangelical pushing it on other people or just doing it in your life as well as the fact that it dictates how you think the world functions beyond yourself how you think the world came into existence okay consider fables what if someone uh, had a belief that led them to believe they shouldn't eat some red berries because they're like devil berries, they're demon fruit. And then not eating those led to them living because they would have been fucking poisoned. There's an example of it not only not being harmful, but being beneficial. That's not to say, oh, it's great, just believe things with no proof. But the suggestion that a belief that lacks evidence that is the basis for your worldview is always harmful when you do not believe believing on those standards is in and of itself is harmful that doesn't stand up that doesn't stand up what you think happens when we die and i think whenever you base a core part of the way that you believe the world works here's some reductio ad absurdum shit okay what if you believe the god of empiricism rules over the universe and everything in the universe is causal and that if you don't base everything in your life on solid proof, you go to hell when you die. However, of course, the paradox the, or the one exception is that you believe that without any evidence. Would that belief which would then lead you to only believe things that are backed up by evidence, be harmful. That would probably be uh, an issue. It's the way that you believe you should act, and depending on the religion, to be fair, how sometimes you think other people should act, you obviously, I've said the word act so many times, take action on, um, on those beliefs. And while sometimes that action can be good, it's not being done for a good reason often. For example, 
missionaries that do charity work. We've gone from always harmful to sometimes beneficial, but not for the right reason. Right. Right. Is this person a, uh, what, what do you call someone who, who is, who is uh, enthralled by scientism? Who perhaps doesn't understand that as good as, as good as methodological naturalism is, it involves making assumptions. It involves accept. Ex you're always going to have to accept axioms. If you want to, if you want to get anywhere. No, no, scientism. Yeah, but what do you call someone who's enthralled by it? What do you call someone who, uh, you you end up with? It's it's not quite like an infinite recursion, but like what's your what's your evidence that an evidence based worldview is the right is the right way to go and then you go what's the evidence for that what's the evidence for that what's the evidence for that you you are going to hit bedrock at some point where you're just functioning on an axiom it might seem pretty damn good methodological naturalism i.e the scientific method pretty fucking good seems pretty fucking good uh but the bedrock of that doesn't itself have evidence without utilizing circular reasoning but you have to hear about Jesus the whole time. The common argument I hear mostly from Christians and Muslims along the lines of how do you have morality without God? And it makes me think, if you weren't religious, would you be out there killing people? The, the logical answer is probably not. But there are some people that find absolutely abhorrent things okay in- They don't have to disagree with that. If they believe morality comes from God, she just- floated the idea that you can do the right thing for the wrong reason. If they think morality comes from God, they can also say, oh, you're not killing people, but you're not not killing people because it's the law of God, it's, it's true morality. So you're not actually a moral individual, you're just doing what you would do if you were. You can say something like that. Oh, he, sorry. No misgendering intended. It's just very hard to recognize this person as anything other than female. The name of their religion, so I struggle. I, it's a very womanly looking cartoon to me. struggle to think that no one would be thinking that way. And this kind of comes into gray area for me personally whenever it's regarding religions that don't seek converts or don't try and impose their beliefs on anyone else. Oh, it's listed on their profile. Okay. No, look, no offense intended. No offense intended, okay? Look, I've seen the, uh, I've seen the fan profile now. The best one I can think of is Judaism because it's very difficult and time intensive and takes a lot of, you know, education and stuff to convert to Judaism. But at the end of the day, I also think maybe it's not my Sometimes. business if people are doing things or restricting themselves in ways that are completely arbitrary. Um... So I don't actively speak out against religions like that because ultimately I think that they are still doing harm to themselves in some degree, but at that point it's not my business. And I'm not uh... going to pretend that I don't think that those are not beneficial to an individual or a community. But again, no one's making laws based on it. No one is actively... No lawmaking is influenced by Judaism? Ever? Anywhere? Trying to convert people or anything, so at the end of the day, I'm gonna look at it and go, yeah, there's really no good reason that you're restricting yourself in that way, but is it affecting me? Uh, does Is this person aware that things exist outside of the US and certain things even exist within the US, but it's pretty fucking undeniable if you if you accept the existence of the world. No. And just because I brought up Judaism, I wanna note I will get into ethno religions in a minute because Right, okay. There is a lot more to say about it than just that. Um that's just it came up here and it will come up again in a minute, and again there will be chapters, timestamps, whatever. I also do want to note, though, though that you Right. They've failed pretty hard as well. 
they've missed an issue that happens sometimes wherein two things two things and it depends what flavor of Jew you are you can be a Jewish guy who is way too heavily controlled or pressured by family to date the right person because they don't want you to date someone who isn't Jewish because if you end up marrying them if you end up having kids your kids won't be uh, Jewish. They won't be full whack. Which, my understanding is there's a spectrum of... There, will, there might be a Jewish community who doesn't, doesn't really care about that. There might be one where they'll recognize that distinction, but still accept them. But then there are some communities where if you're a Jewish guy and you have a child with a non-Jewish woman, your kid will be, like, not accepted by the community. I'd say that's the religious belief affecting someone else, even if it's not a matter of proselytizing and more like um, excluding a new person. Judaism, while not exclusively the only religion like that, is a bit of an anomaly of a religion that really does not care if other people are a part of it or not. I mean, again, as far as I'm aware, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not Jewish, but I don't think that Judaism necessarily has any beliefs that damn anyone to hell, as far as I'm well aware, hell doesn't even exist in Judaism. Um, but it doesn't dictate how they think of that person, as opposed to a Christian who may be super progressive and chill, and maybe they're not pushing their beliefs on you, but at the end of the day, they still have a fundamental belief that there is something wrong with you when you are going to hell. And Christianity is so has such a wide array of beliefs that, you know, maybe it's very select people for others and they don't. don't think that non-Christians are going to hell. Maybe someone thinks basically everyone except them is going to hell. But regardless of how many or what kinds of people are on that list, there's still people that their religion tells them are fundamentally bad and are going to hell. And whether or not they choose to proselytize on the basis of that, it is still making them view relative. What's the, what's the evidence that supports your view of those people? Relatively innocent, normal people as bad, and just because Stop someone with the them choose to not say it out loud doesn't mean that that doesn't affect people internally and doesn't affect the way that they see other people and the way that they may talk about those other people when they're not around. You don't care if it doesn't affect other people, but you consider affecting other people to include the private thoughts of someone who has those beliefs. So why would you accept Judaism? There's, I don't think there's, I don't think there's actually a system in that head. I don't think there's, there's a formed thought and ideology in this head. Do you think this person believed all this before they wrote this or started talking about this? Or are they, are they just, are they, are they writing their manifesto on the fly? And I'm sorry, but it really just doesn't feel like a healthy mindset to have where whether or not you're telling other people about it, that you think everyone who's not like you in a certain way is doomed to be like damned to eternal suffering. What if you think everyone who isn't like you is inherently damaging themselves? Obviously, you know, it's preferable when they keep it to themselves. That's objectively better, but it's still like not a good thought process. So that's kind of the end of my basics of why I'm an anti-theist thing. Guys, um, I do want to say, like, again, there are... There's the primer we know now. What else did we get? Holy fuck. We have an eth... I don't know, sweetie. I'm anti-theistic. Here's my, here's my entire section on race being connected to religion. Oh, no. More nuances about the harm that religion does due to specific religions, which you can check out that other video for. But the fundamental core belief of belief without proof about a core value is bad um, applies across the board to, I was going to say pretty much everything. About a core value? Uh-oh. I thought they were limiting it to, like, material realities. Or, I guess, they, they, they did say as an issue of being damned to hell or not, so I guess that. What about, what would constitute to this person proof of a moral belief? When someone's, 
do they mean it would would it being logically valid be enough for them or do they want empirical proof i think a more important section for this video would be to differentiate between proof in terms of something being being logically valid and proof in terms of empirical evidence because it seems like it seems like we have ideas about it it can possibly be a belief about the nature of reality and it can be a belief about morality when when going to hell or not was mentioned that's something you'd probably want to dive into that would be an early thing to dive into while defining it that way every religion it applies to every religion so to move on from that i kind of want to address a few comments that i received that are kind of like oh what about this or how about this or etc um and the first thing i want to touch on is ethno religions just because that is the i just talked about it i do have a video specifically about indigenous religions as i am an indigenous person and i get a lot of people being like oh why haven't i made a patreon post in over half a year because it's really just an alternative way to support what i'm doing and i'm not sure what i put on youtube will be safe to put on patreon it's more like an alternative tip jar rather than something I want to run in and of itself. It's a way to have a sub without it being a Twitch sub or a YouTube membership. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not sure about posting some of the stuff I post on YouTube there because I don't really have a feel of what can fly on Patreon. Mad about that? And that video goes into a lot more detail about my personal experience with it, about other Native people in my community that I've spoken to. Um, a really, really awesome woman who I took a class with, um, who was very spiritual. But the kind of gist of that, um, which again, I'm mostly going to keep it to Native religions because I feel like that's a place that it's appropriate for me to speak on it. But keep in mind that this is the general mindset I have about it. Overall, it's just I really only can apply my own. What's your evidence? Uh-oh, uh-oh, godless snowshoe. What's the, what's the solid evidence behind the propriety of what you can talk on or not? That seems like a, a core value if it's controlling your behavior like this on what you'll speak on or not speak on. What's your, what's your proof regarding propriety of subject to talk about? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Culture, because that's the only one that I really... I don't thumbs up or thumbs down videos, so I don't care to. You know a substantial am amount about and like am a part of. Except my own, of course. And I would say, ugh, I wouldn't exactly say that I include them in my anti-theism, but I also still disagree that there is any value in believing something without evidence. However, the entanglement of... Wait, so your own bespoke definition for what you believe has to still have exceptions. What was the point of coming up with your own definition? Like the main, the main use of that is that you don't have to then have caveats. Of culture in often colonized or discriminated against communities um, is a lot stronger with ethno religions, obviously, than it is with something like Christianity or even Islam, where not just the religion itself, but the culture surrounding it have been colonized, genocided, some way weeded out. And while I do think that those unfounded beliefs are not productive in like a vacuum, I do think that having religion in those specific communities stay intact is a reasonable, I don't know, sacrifice in order to keep the culture that surrounds them around. As well as the- Right. These, these feel like some values and beliefs that you're not providing evidence of. I also like the suggestion that there is complete and total separation between the between religions and culture, as if they're two, as if they're oil and water, but religion can act as a pillar for the culture and not be meshed in with it. In any way, interesting. The fact that even in um, religions like Islam that are very culturally a thing, they are so large and widespread and global that it is a lot easier to kind of untangle the cultural relevance of them than it is for something like an indigenous religion or an African religion or the like. I don't get that point. You mean without damaging the rest of the culture? But if any of that culture stemmed from the religion, you wouldn't think that's a problem? Like, 
And to be fair, um, I do want to say something I mentioned in my indigenous anti-theist video was the fact that you can look back as a community on these religious beliefs and look at them as an important part of your history and an important thing to respect your ancestors and an important part of your culture while not necessarily... You can think it's important to respect your ancestors based on what evidence? That sounds like a that sounds like it would fall under a, a, a religious belief under this person's definition. Why would you be okay with the idea that you need to respect your ancestors given everything else you've just said? Necessarily believing that God exists. And while in an ideal world, I think that that would be great. We don't live in that ideal world. And I do not think it's in any way my place to say that that is a preferable option than believing that those religions are real. I know that that works for me, that I can participate in aspects of my culture that are important to me, that I have family that care about me, a community that cares about me. Well, if you don't practice it, if you don't engage in it, it's not your culture. And that ultimately... I can participate at a powwow just as much as someone else for the most part. I did talk about like drum circles for a thing in the other video, but go watch that. Essentially, I guess the point is it is absolutely possible to have those cultures exist without their religious beliefs and look at them as cultural, historical, familial, whatever. But I also don't think that I am confident in saying that that is the right way to do it. Ultimately, that is my take and how I approach it in my own life. Um, as someone whose family is part of an ethno-religion and who is a part of a colonized Extinct culture. Family. But again, I want to make it very clear that I'm not saying that is the right or wrong way to go about okay. it. I'm just saying that can work. That is a thing that can and has happened, and it works. Sounds like picking up the label of anti-theist is way too strong for what they want to express. I don't know if that's the best way to do it or not. So ultimately, the conclusion on ethno religions is i think the culture staying around is absolutely worth the religion staying around even if again in a vacuum it would be great to not have unfounded beliefs be a part of that ultimately i think it is a very very small sacrifice for how much of culture is based on evidence i don't or keeping those communities like in existence <laughs> And I would love to see a world in which those communities are thriving and flourishing and there is not a, like, metaphysic. I think the definition given earlier of what a religion is would mean cultures are religions, or at least many or most are. Go belief attached to it, but that may be an unrealistic thing that I want to be completely honest. And the next kind of thing I get is essentially the topic of faith helps people or it gives people hope. And I think I've talked about this quite a few times, so I'm going to try and be brief with it, but I don't know, we'll see. I say that a lot and it doesn't always happen. I do not think that there are any positives to religion, aside from the ethno-religion things I mentioned before, that cannot exist without it. That's not to say there are no positive aspects of religion. However, I don't think that there are any of them. I'm sorry, I'm really bored. That was fun while it lasted.